Hello and welcome to another managerial special from the Honest Football Podcast. I'm Craig Zevin and with me as always is Mr. Daniel Cody. Today we are talking about the sacking of Danny Schofield and the hiring of Mark Frotheringham at Huddersfield Town. He is their new head coach. Uh, in a statement, uh, the 38-year-old Scotsman has been identified the right man to lead the first team after a thorough recruitment process. His contract, which runs until June 2025, was finalised on Wednesday morning but had already started his work at town by taking training for the first time on Tuesday afternoon as he prepares for the first game against Reading. Uh, Fulham has significant experience in coaching in top levels of German football, most recently guiding Hertha Berlin to the Bundesliga survival as assistant head coach to Felix Magat. Uh, he's working on his way for pro licence. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, it's a very long statement. Um, <laughs> but let's talk about the previous head coach, uh, Stanley Schofield. He took charge. Only after Carlos Cobran left during the summer. Um, n- nothing against Danny Schofield, but it was a bad appointment. It was never going to work. It was a necessary but known wrong appointment. I think that's the issue because he came in just before the, the opening game, didn't he? After Corbran walked out in, what was it, mid-July, three weeks before the season. And the problem with the situation was it was probably too late to get in a different manager or head coach halfway through pre-season with a completely different style and that had to get used to the players and train them in a different way. However, we both said at the time in that manager special that it wouldn't last long and that at the latest he'd be there at the World Cup. And we thought they'd really struggle. I predicted them as low as 21st, I think, this season. And it's been proven right. I think a lot of us saw it coming. Obviously, we've got to take a bit of the blame away from Danny Schofield here and before that for Corbyn for walking because they had lost six of the 11 that played in that playoff final in May. It's a very strange situation. Obviously, Corbyn went because he felt he wasn't backed after achieving a miracle and Danny Schofield was left to sort of pick up the pieces. So while I didn't think it was ever going to work and neither did you, while it hasn't worked, performances and results haven't been great for the most part. I do feel there are quite a lot of mitigating circumstances and I don't think he was really set up or given the chance to succeed. Do you think they should have followed Derby's approach where we're seeing you took charge for a certain amount of games as a, as a temporary head coach and then in that time try and find someone to recruit as a as a new head coach? It is always a risk, isn't it? Particularly with the break for the World Cup. you It's been talked about many times. When a, an interim or an assistant or whatever takes over permanently, you've normally got someone who's worked at the club for so long, who's been part of the fabric, understands how it works then it goes wrong very quickly and they've lost their job and all their time at the club as well. Whereas if you keep it on an interim basis or a caretaker basis, whatever you want to call it, it is a lot easier to switch back into that role then. And I think that that is a fair point to make. But when a new manager comes in, are they going to want that sort of person there? Are they going to want to bring their own people? It's going to be a bit difficult in this situation. We'll get on to why in a minute. But I do agree with you. I don't think he ever should have been made permanent manager. I think he should have been a a caretaker until, and they could have done the same, gone the 10 games, see how it went and then got someone in. But Danny Schofield would have been more protected then as well. As it is, it's a shame to see him go because he's done a good job at the club in his other roles, but it was never going to work. And that's the crux of it here. Yeah, you could safely say that he got thrown into the deep end and now he's, he's paid, well, he's paid the price for trying to help out the club yeah and he wasn't he wasn't helped behind the scenes we mentioned they lost over half the 11 from Wembley the ones that are left at the squad it's it's not some of the star names it's some of the solid players that maybe need that bit of gold dust around them there are one or two very good players there but the squad depth has taken a big hit they have had a a difficult start to the season and as much as I'm understand why the decision's been made and I can understand why Huddersfield have changed manager and I knew it was going to be coming I do feel for Danny Schofield I don't think the club have helped him and if anything I actually think they put him in an impossible position one that he couldn't turn down but one that he was unlikely to succeed in so I'm not entirely thrilled with the way the club dealt with it but they've got a new man now so hopefully he can do a job for him because they're in big trouble at the minute Let's move on to the new man in charge, uh, Mark Fotheringham. He follows the likes of Birmingham and QPR and it switches well in the one of hiring a new head coach that's stepping up to to the main role. This one's slightly different though because he hasn't really done much, hasn't really done any coaching roles in England. He's done it abroad. Yeah, it is a very unique appointment. And I think 
a lot of the Huddersfield fans, as this news was sort of coming out yesterday, were reacting maybe a little indifferently to it at times. And it's always hard to tell from the loud minority on social media at sometimes. But Huddersfield always a point this way. Corboran was an unproven man stepping up to a number one when he came in. That worked out. Danny Cowley was stepping up levels when he came up to manage Huddersfield. That worked out OK. He did the job he was set out to do. And Danny Schofield obviously hadn't managed at this level before as a as a first choice manager. So Wagner before that. And David Wagner before that was relatively inexperienced. So this is the Huddersfield route. They don't go out and get a proven experienced manager. And they are a club that run on a certain level of budget, which often isn't going to attract those with the higher demands. Now, there are risks and reward with that. We've got the risk of it might not work out. You might struggle. And in this situation, we saw it with Barnsley last year after finishing in the playoffs. They went through an experienced manager after an experienced manager and they ended up relegated. Hopefully that won't happen with Huddersfield. The other side of that, if the manager does really well, they then want to be back to walk out like a Corbrand. So it is a delicate balancing act. But Mark Fotheringham himself, a bit of a weird situation, has worked under Felix Magath, who has, seems to have succeeded everywhere apart from when he was in England with Fulham, albeit that was a weird situation too. And he has got a plethora of playing and coaching knowledge from a number of countries, which you've got to give him credit for, because up until a few years ago, that wasn't the norm for UK-based players. So I'm intrigued to see what he can do. It's very hard to judge what we think he'll do. But obviously, he's got on a assist, uh, promotion on his CV as an assistant. He's worked under some very good people. I'll be intrigued to see how he goes about it. I've seen his first interview, which I'm going to be honest, hasn't really convinced me because... In, in what way? It's one of those interesting things with an interview. And maybe I'm just going back into work mode too much from work interviews. But I saw him using all the buzzwords without giving me the answer that I actually thought he believed. He, he basically said all the things, we're going to try and play attacking football, but with a cautious base. I'm not here to be the player's friend. I'm here to get results. All of those, I mean, you could have played cliche bingo with that interview. Let's be brutally honest. There were so many of them about. I just hope there's substance behind it. And we mentioned earlier about coaching teams. It's going to be interesting to see who, if anyone, he brings in later with him. There are obviously assistants at the club. The two caretakers are staying in position the head of goalkeeping and the existing technical staff are there. So it looks like he's coming into Huddersfield structure without any other change. And it's going to be interesting to see how he does in that environment. But while the interview didn't blow me away, I'll tell you what it did, Craig. It reminded me a lot of Graham Jones' first interview at Luton. And we all know how that worked out, which is maybe part of the reason I've got the alarm bells ringing. But That's another one. (laughs) That's another one, yeah. (laughs) But we've got to give him time. We've got to give him a chance. I know you'll get to it in a minute, but the first five games, there's a few teams he probably needs to be beating in that. Well, and it's someone that you don't know. I don't know their style because he's new to being a head coach. I know he's obviously followed Felix McGat, but he might want to have his own style slightly different to Felix McGat. So I haven't got a clue what how Huddersfield are going to set up come first, uh, their first game. No, and that's why it worried me that he said, I want to play an attacking base or an attacking style because you look at where Huddersfield's struggled in their first season back down in the championship it was doing exactly that and when Danny Cowley came in and then under Carlos Corboran if there was a word you would use to describe Huddersfield it was probably disciplined and they were very solid they didn't let in many goals in most of the games they won they were all about keeping clean sheets and then nicking one or two goals and they did it bloody well last season under Corboran let's just say that but I do worry if this Huddersfield team on paper comes out and plays I think it gets caught out I've got to be honest with you. So there are there are positions where they can be exposed defensively. I think they need to think about protecting that first. And you look at those first five games. I know you mentioned Reading and Luton away will be tough, obviously, the side they beat in the playoffs last year. But then three games in a row, Hull, Rother and Preston. That is so, so important because we talked about it with the Watford manager special the other day. If he goes into the World Cup in a poor run in the next 10 games, do some clubs even think about pulling the trigger again? Because it's a long time to sit on performances if you've got four weeks break between the matches. So I'm a little bit worried for him and how he's going to set up. I hope he's just saying the right things in the media and he's going to have a lot more defensive substance behind him because Huddersfield need results at the moment, not exciting football. No, but I think where you've got the lack of depth, as you said earlier, about the six players gone from that final, with a lack of depth for that Huddersfield side, it's, it's obviously he has to obviously stick with what he's got. January's nowhere near, but you have to worry about the squad depth. 
You have to. We said it at the start of the season. We said it. We understood why Corbran went because you looked at that squad and you said, this cannot match what he did last year. And there was a precedent the year before with Barnsley. We both said it at the start of the year. Barnsley are going to struggle because they're nowhere near as strong as last season. Didn't replace key players. That instance, they lost their captain. They lost their top scoring striker. And Huddersfield are in similar situations. There are some moments and some players that can save them. I'm a massive fan of Sorba Thomas. Jordan Rhodes will score goals. They've still got some very solid defensive players, but the stardust isn't quite there. And this is a job where Huddersfield will need to be solid. They cannot be aggressive, front-footed, and try and outscore teams because they will get caught on the counter. They're not a good enough side with their current squad. And it's a shame to say, because they were brilliant last season. I really enjoyed watching them. But I think they're still in a relegation battle. And this appointment, it doesn't hugely inspire me. And even if you're going for an inexperienced coach who's been assistants elsewhere and whatever, like you said earlier, having them not having worked in England as a coach, that's a big gamble as well, as we saw with Barnsley yet again. So let's uh, just have a prediction. He's got a two and a half year deal. His contract runs out in June 2025. Question one, does he see out the season? Oh, the season? The season. All he's got to do from where Huddersfield are now is stay up because their expectations have to have changed, having been behind. They got a really crucial win under caretaker management and those guys are still there behind the scenes, which gives me confidence. The problem is, Craig, we don't know what to expect from his man management style. And that's the thing you don't get tested until you're a number one. We had Graham Jones at Luton, brilliant coach, had an extremely good reputation, but his man management, his press, his media, it didn't work. And it's where he got found out. That's the one thing we don't know with Fotheringham. And I guess because he hasn't been in the UK, we've got less exposure to that. And he's got less exposure to dealing with what are renowned to be pretty difficult media in the UK. My instinct says no. And I've I've got Marcus Shop vibes about it. So he doesn't see out the... Uh, well, that question two is redundant now. The, the question is, does he see out his contract? And you're saying no. So um, for me, I, I'm I'm not sure on this. It's just hard to predict, isn't it? We it's don't really know to what predict. to expect. No, you don't know because it's very hard to call for the next few games. And, and having three games that are away, three out of four are away, that's going to make it a lot harder for him. And they're not easy away games as well. So it's a bit of an unknown for Hudson, and it's going to be very tough. But that is our thoughts on the hiring of Mark Fromm as the head coach of Huddersfield Town. Uh, let us know in the comments how you think he'll get on and do you think it's the right appointment or not. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to your own sport podcast. We have got championship predictions for this weekend. They are appearing up tomorrow. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Honest Football Free. And we'll see you next time.